Hey, glad you're here for this tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to create texture vector brushes easily, my way. But before we start working on this bear I've roughly sketched out, I'd recommend checking out my video Easy Vector Magic on my channel. That one covers vector mode in detail, step by step. It'll help you understand how things work, and with this video, you'll definitely get the hang of it. Affinity Designer has three modes, Designer Persona, Pixel Persona, and Export Persona, and they all work together seamlessly. The tools are well integrated, so vectors stay in vector mode, and pixel-based work stays in raster mode, just like traditional drawing software. You can create your main shapes in vector and add details with pixel brushes, just like I did for this little bear. I didn't plan the colors beforehand, so I'll just go with blue. When I work, nothing is ever final. I keep tweaking things as I go. But I believe that having a clear sketch beforehand helps speed up the process, you just need to trace over your rough lines. You'll also see a bunch of Wacom helper icons on my screen. Those are grid panels and screen controls. They might look a bit cluttered, but I've used them for years. Alright, let's set up the background with some warm, soft colors. Now, let's get into creating a texture brush in Affinity Designer step by step. First, create a black square. Then, use the circle tool to draw a white leaf shape. Convert it to curves, select the top and bottom node points, and convert them to sharp nodes. I want to add some depth, so I'll use the transparency tool and drag from top to bottom. You can design whatever shape you want, but remember this, black equals 0% visibility, white equals 100%, and gray creates varying levels of transparency. Since I've added some transparency to the base of the leaf, it'll blend more naturally. Scale them up or down a bit for randomness, then group them together. Drag them inside the black square layer, if you forgot to click Insert Inside, just do it now. Then, go to File Export PNG, set the area to Selection Only, and click Export. Now, let's make the brush. Open the brush panel, create a new category, and give it a name. Select New Texture Intensity Brush, then choose the leaf texture we just made. That's it. Double click the brush to fine tune the settings. 
Let's start painting bushes. First, add a dark background as a base. Then paint gradually, adjusting the color as you go. Texture intensity brushes apply a texture along a path, so they aren't purely vector-based. Tip, hold Ctrl plus Alt to adjust brush size or use the bracket keys. Texture intensity brushes use grayscale textures to control the opacity of the brush strokes. White areas allow full visibility of the color, black areas make it completely transparent, and gray tones create varying levels of transparency. The brush will be generated from left to right, so don't make all the leaves identical. If you need multiple variations, just repeat the process, that's how you create custom vector brushes. It's also useful to make single leaf versions for fine details. Now, let's draw the trunk and branches using the pencil tool for stroke lines. Go back to the texture file. We will create a different brush. Help speed up your painting. Duplicate the leaf group, arrange them from left to right. Add some randomness. Don't make them look too similar, avoid creating a pattern. and export as PNG. Create a new texture intensity brush, double-click it, adjust the size, Click Repeat Body and slightly move the red dashed line to ensure smooth continuity. Now we have two brush styles, time to paint the tree. This method saves a lot of time. You should try different styles depending on how natural you want the result to be. Create a single leaf design to capture the small details. Since we're working with vector curves, you can edit and recolor the base shapes anytime. Texture intensity brushes are raster based but can be recolored using stroke color, as long as the brush texture is grayscale. There are other brushes for you to try. You can search for videos, some creators explain it better than I do. Try to keep everything grouped, so if you need to tweak colors later, it'll be much easier. Grouping helps you select objects easily and change their colors. Working with these kinds of textures in vector mode uses a lot of memory. If your device has low RAM, it might lag or crash. 16 GB of RAM should be enough. I recommend rasterizing the group when you're done. Just go to the layer menu or right-click the group and select Rasterize. It'll be more stable that way. Plus, you'll become familiar with the painting software you're using. I'll switch to Pixel Persona to add final details. In Brush Tool Options, there's an important setting. Protect Alpha prevents painting on transparent areas of a layer, 
allowing you to edit only the existing pixels without affecting transparency. And don't forget to turn off Protect Alpha when you're done using it. Alternatively, you can use a clipping mask, just create a new pixel layer and drag it inside the layer you want to clip to. You're already familiar with it. Try creating clouds and experiment with different settings. By doing this, you'll better understand how it works. That's it. Not too hard, right? Although I may not provide many details about creating vector brushes, it's a basic and easy approach to making them. Now you can create your own brushes, sell them, or share them, it's up to you. This technique is great for anything you draw frequently, especially for children's book illustrations or complex backgrounds. Finally, Tweak the overall color and brightness so everything looks cohesive. I try to keep my tutorials simple and to the point, so I don't go too deep into every little detail. But if you've watched my videos before and love drawing, you'll probably get the idea. I'll keep finding interesting topics for future tutorials. Thanks for watching, see you next time.